Welcome to another video. We have a very easy problem to figure out, but you just have to be conclusive when you come up with your final answer. And the problem is we have four positive numbers, A, B, C, and D, and we have the pairwise product to be A, B, so you multiply A by B, A by D, you multiply B by C and C by D, and the answers you're going to get are 64, 88, 120, 165 in any order. Now, so this is the problem with the question because you do not know which one is 64, which one is 88, which one is 120, or which one is 164, but you know that all the pairwise products are going to be these four but you just cannot tell. You see, the word is not respectively. So I really don't know what gave me 64. Which of these multiplications gave me 64? Okay, so, but I'm supposed to find A plus B plus C plus D. A problem like this must clearly impress on you that you do not need to find what A is, what B is, what C is, or what D is, why? Because you really don't know the order. You might be lucky to find the answer, but that's not the strategy you want to take. Okay, let's get into the video. Here, we have pairwise products to be 64, 88, 120, and 165 and I'm supposed to find A plus B plus C plus D, and remember each of these numbers is a positive integer. So there are no fractions and there are no negatives. And that makes our life a lot easier because then this is more like a Diophantine problem, okay? Now, what do we do? You, let's do something. We know that We can actually add everything up because multiplication will give us two big numbers. I mean, numbers that are too big. So we want to do addition. Let's start with addition as a strategy that could help us. If we choose, so let's go. Solution. So if we choose to add up all the numbers, A, B, all the products, A, B plus B, C, plus C, D, plus D, A. Um, this is going to be equal to, we're trying to add everything up. It's going to be the sum of all of these, right? Let's write it here. If we add this to this, this is going to be, let's do the easiest addition. Well, this is going to be 12. This is going to be 14. So that's 152. Okay, 152 plus 120 is going to be 272. 272 plus 160, that's going to be 437, 437. Okay, so if we add everything up, we're going to get 437. In short, this is the most efficient strategy. The reason why it is, is because you get a totality and because you can't start doing subtraction because you don't know what is what. That's the thing about this problem. So what we're going to do is, from here, is there a chance to factor? Do we need to rearrange what we have here? These two have B in common. These two have D in common. And each of them, yeah. So here, we can take out B and say we have A plus C plus. Here, we can take out D and say we have C plus A, which is the same thing as A plus C, 437. So this is the same as this. We can factor it out. So we have A plus C times the remainders here. We have B plus D and that's equal to 437. This is an easy problem or easier problem than what you would have had if we were not dealing with positive integers. I need to actually put that, that we're 
in okay we're dealing with positive integers that's an essential fact that I have to um, tell you um, well it's here already positive integers so because we're multiple so the sum of two integers is an integer the sum of two integers is an integer so this is the product of two integers giving us this number 437 all you need to do is find all the possible combinations of products that are going to give you 437 that's where the biggest work is the first option you must always consider is 1 times 437 so case 1 Case 1, you have 437 is equal to 1 times 437. If we have this case, it means that one of these, a plus c, has to be equal to 1, or this one, it doesn't matter which one you choose, but just without loss of generality, let's just say that the one on the left is equal to 1, the one on the right is 437. Now, say a plus c is equal to 1 this is impossible because the sum of two positive numbers can never be 1 because the smallest positive integer no the sum of two positive integers I didn't not numbers the sum of two positive integers cannot be 1 because the smallest positive integer is 1 so if this is 1 this has to be 1 if it is the smallest and 1 plus 1 cannot be 1 therefore this is impossible so because we cannot have one of these factors equal to 1 this option is not possible so we go to case 2 Now we find another set of numbers that would multiply to give us 437. Now this is where it is tough. Here you have to keep trying factors because you know none, no number that you know less than 10 divides 437. Okay, But it's not a prime number. You might think it's a prime number, but it is not a prime number because for you to decide whether 437 is a prime number, you have to first look for Look for the square root of 437. Well, we know that the square root of 437 is between the square root of 400 and the square root of 441, which is 21. So the number has to be between 20 and 21. Okay? So, because 20 squared is 400 and 441 is the next one. So we know that if you can check all numbers before you get to 21, all numbers before you get to 21, and none of them divides this, then you say clearly this is a prime number. That's how you find, figure out whether a number is prime or not, if you're doing trial, if you're trying numbers out. But in your, on the way to getting to 21, you're going to find a number that divides this, and the number is 19. Okay, you have to just figure it out. So here, we know case 2, we say that 437 is equal to 19 times, what would you multiply by 9 to end in 7? 3, so that has to be 23. So 19 times 23 is equal to 437. So we can easy, easily say, then, say A plus C is equal to 19, then the other one, b plus d, will be equal to 23, based on the structure we have here. And by the way, remember, you're not supposed to solve and find a, b, c, d. No, you just want to find a plus b plus c plus d. The sum of these two will have to be 42. And this is the answer to your question. There is no other combination of integers that will give you 437, and that's it.
Now, if you go back into your, the details, now that you've seen that the only two options are 19 and 23, then you can think of what two numbers you will, will you add together to get 19, but when you multiply them together, so let's look at A and C. Do we have AC here? We actually don't have AC. What do we have? We have BC. Well, if you figure out all the numbers and you start doing division, you guess which one you want to use, you might be able to figure out that the numbers will have to be 8 and 8, 11 and 15. Those are actually fact. Let's look, say on further work, the numbers a, B, C, D are 8, 8, 11, 15 in some order. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.